All right, so we are rolling. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, dear Taurus. There you are. That's you. This is Terra Illumination. This is your love and relationship report for February 2018. You know the drill. You know the protocols. Watch for your sun, moon, and rising. Squish it all together. Reinterpret. Uh, tell your own story. Make up your own story. Okay? You can do that. Also, if you have to, you know, do that cross-watching thing, check up on your significant others. It can really throw a light on the bigger perspective of the relationships, you know, really can help. Also, let's have a look. Uh, like a lot of the other reports, we've been throwing a little sprinkle of herbs and spices coming from the astrology stuff. So for you, Taurus, you know, yeah, we've got the big Saturn and Capricorn thing going up there in your ninth house, restructuring, remodeling, complete repurposing of that part of your life, your world, dismantling anything and everything that's not working according to the laws of Saturn, and then bringing in truth and structure that will endure for the long term. This is a long term journey, very little to do with love and romance, but it will have an impact like a like a, a ripple effect. Also, you've got the big old eclipses that are pounding down right now in, you know, technically it's a hard square with the Leo Aquarius thing going on. Uh, at the end of January, and then the full-on Aquarius new moon eclipse in the middle of February, which is up there in your 10th house of your place in this world, your public, your most prominent presence in this world. People call it your destiny or your career or something. So it's like new starts, new awakenings, new beginnings of what could lie ahead for you in that department of your life. Like, who are you? Why are you here on this earth? What are you, what are you going to bring to this earth, you know? Secondly, that was opposed by, you know, how that's going to affect you in the fourth house of home and family and foundations. So you might feel a lot of disruption happening in terms of what's happening in the core foundations of your life, like your home, your family environment, your loved ones, your sense of safety and security and foundations in this world. Simultaneously, at the same time, uh, the polar opposite of that energy, like being out there, being the uh, the boss of something, being out there in the world very, very visible as opposed to snuggled up in bed, okay? Just the opposite energy. So stops and starts, new awakenings, and realizing that it's going to be a lot of probably restructuring and remodeling in that area too, at least new beginnings, okay? Now the big thing is Jupiter in Scorpio in your seventh house. The seventh house is the house of open enemies, but it's also the house of marriage, okay? It's the same energy, but one is the inverse of the other. Like with a marriage, it's typically a very deliberately chosen, structured relationship. So if you do that right, it's great. If you mess that up, marriage can be one of the worst situations you could ever be in. And that's typical. That's very, very common. We all know that. We've all heard these stories. It's, uh, it's normal, okay? Because it's in the context of the most profound relationship of all, which is the ultimate one-on-one, -on -one, 180 degrees polarity opposition uh, that occurs in a, a marriage-type dynamic, that you get to have the best of opportunities and you get to discover the worst. And that's why they say for better or worse in sickness or health, richer or poorer, because that's what you're undertaking when you're dealing with the seventh house, okay? Know thy enemy, okay? Know thy spouse. Know your mate. Know yourself. You can't do that unless you really know yourself first and foremost. Love you first, okay, Taurus? No going back, okay, with these eclipses and Saturn. No going back. A lot of love and healing and transformation is going to occur for you in the context of seventh house marriage type structure relationship because Jupiter is there, the great benefic, and it's in Scorpio right there in your seventh house. So it's all about deep transformational soul healing at the depth and the core of, that comes to you in the context of significant love relationship, particularly a marriage type structure. And it could be a little bit rattling because you might be discovering everything that does not work. That's what happens in deep vibrational energy healing, especially at the levels of uh, healing through intimacy. Okay, so I did a lot of preamble there for you, Taurus, but it's pretty significant because of that whole Jupiter and Scorpio in your seventh house. Cards are well shuffled. And you can see a witness to that. And no jumpers, flyers, oracles, no reversals. And uh, we're just going to go for it in just a moment.
here we go okay now just enjoy just pretend you're watching a little tiny movie or something let's enjoy and make the most out of this all right Taurus and understand that we are blessed by our angels here in this reading okay we're gonna make the best of it <clears throat> okay so this will be your energy that you're radiating the love energy relationship energy this would be the same thing radiated by a significant other you're always transmitting and radiating and receiving energy okay and if you're a single you could even think of this as a singles reading if you allow for the laws of attraction you're radiating this uh, and you're getting you're attracting that in return you know it's very very simple so over here would be deep down what's going on inside of you at the soul level deep down what's going on inside of them at the soul level and this is itself the relationship there's you Taurus the significant other there's the relationship itself a third identity third entity with an identity and uh, mission purpose and energy of its own that needs to be honored nurtured and respected in a very healthy relationship this would be the prospects over here this is going to be circumstantial energy we're going to look at that in just a second to get things rolling it's not necessarily your energy but it's out there and it's what it makes a lot of sense to take full advantage of the weather so if it's really tough weather figure out how to make advantage of that if it's really good weather figure out how to take the make the best out of it don't let that own you whatever it is so you've got the fool oh my gosh okay so for you Taurus it might be feeling like you're almost like I have no idea what to do I'm just going blind into this thing and it's magical and it's wonderful and it's also very scary all of it at the same time my angels please help me it feels like it's almost like you know how on Terra Illumination we kind of go I am guided I am protected I am guided I am protected well this is almost like the opposite it's just like going for it just going for it okay just gonna go for it I have no idea what's gonna happen it's a beautiful new brand new beginning for you uh, Taurus so please see it that way please see this as the beginning of a whole new chapter in your life now think back to February 2017 about a year ago when the first volley of the Leo Aquarius eclipses came into your life what happened in your life at that time now fast forward a year later we're going through these the second volley of eclipses it's happening right now very close to the nodal axis the Leo North node the Aquarius South node so on the Leo North node uh, the moon the full moon that just happened the eclipse there would be shining like what the heck is not working in my home my family my foundations of my life and how is that going to affect the rest of my whole world because that will impact the love and relationship and if you want to get really deep into it we're talking about a broad t-square here with the Leo Aquarius and then the Scorpio thing happening simultaneously right now in February that's a lot of pressure on you Taurus a lot of pressure so it requires having to be very strong with Jupiter there in Scorpio in the seventh house uh, it, it requires that you're going to be brought out to the maximum everything is going to be like blown out here let's have a look what's going on with you my feeling here is that we have to be very very careful because we're dealing with idealism almost like dreams come true wishes having having the chance to come true and almost like by divine invocation by being able to tap into your dreams your wishes uh, like direct access to heaven and realizing oh my gosh I have a chance now to discover what a truly loving relationship is all about and you might have already had a lot of very very solid trustworthy understandable typically classic Taurian uh, indestructible you know time-tested uh, like business models of what works in a love relationship only to discover now that that's all getting blown to pieces if you think of the uh, Jupiter and Scorpio thing if you think of like deep transformational soul healing that goes on there it's like everything is being gutted out to the very soul with the purpose of healing okay so it's gonna almost like it's, it's gonna blow everything wide open where you get the chance to have a, it's almost like you're getting a direct glimpse into heaven and seeing what is possible for you in terms of dream come true regarding 
Like if you could have your wish for how a relationship would work, how it would turn out for you, what would be your wish? And you do that by uh, asking for things to become made known to you in your dreams, in your intuition, uh, through, let's say, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, and then starting to put names to these things. Oh, wow, I've always dreamed of this. Is it actually real? Is it possible? Hmm. Is it a delusion? Is it just, you know, silly, silly, childish fantasies? We have to define that. The more you bring it down into substance and being and start to look at it with a very tough, responsible attitude, like Saturn and Capricorn style, ooh, yes, uh, like having the chance to build your dreams, okay? So let's have a look. But it, it does feel like a new adventure because it makes you, it could make you feel very, very uncertain at times, like, What's real or what's not real here? What's actually going on here in my love life, in my marriage, in my relationships, in the foundations of my life, in the bedroom, in the living room, on the sofa, in the kitchen, and then out there in the big uh, wide world where you're in full public display? O-M-G. Whoa, whoa. We haven't even flicked this card yet. Let's have a look. Bam. Okay. Well, my feeling for you, Taurus, is that you're relating with someone who is very, very concerned that, uh, let's say, justice is served and that they are getting what they deserve and that you're going to get what you deserve. And they are totally OK and comfortable with the whole idea of going deep into the unknown and starting from scratch with almost nothing, almost no sense of guidance or protection, literally having to trust on dreams. It's almost like being in a, an adventure where you, Taurus, are like, I've always wanted this. I've always wanted to do that. And you've got someone who says, well, okay, I'm the person for you, but we're going to do this properly, and we're going to get what we deserve. I'm going to get what I deserve, and you're going to get what you deserve. And But it means having to be very, very uh, magnanimous and equi 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 whatever it is, uh, balanced and very trusting of ourselves and each other in this potentially uh, swirly, nebulous situation right now. It might be like, right now, there's so much pressure on you right now, Taurus, that would be very, very uh, unusual for you not to feel wigged out by what's happening. <clears throat> there's so much goodness, so much yummy goodness there for you with the Saturn stuff and the uh, and the Jupiter stuff, it's very harmonious. It's very nutritious. It's like it, it's like rich, rich, rich fertilizer is now active in your world. But it mean, it's going to shake things up a lot. There's going to be a lot of fermentation and processing and the energy of like, you know, distillations and refining and purifying that's going to go on. And that is just exactly how it's going to be and how it's supposed to be. OK, so it might be disorienting for you. All right. It's kind of kind of going off into the unknown here and having to trust in the in the great beyond. What's going on deep in your soul? Well, luckily, deep down, it's like you're not too wigged out. Yes, in your day to day life right now, through this particular challenge, you know, for, for for Taurus, the February season, the Aquarius season, is typically very challenging because it's a hard square. But you've got so much harmonious, yummy energy with you over there with the Jupiter in your seventh house and with Saturn in your ninth house, that's so nutritious and supportive. Deep down in your soul, you know that. Your soul knows that and feels that like it's a bar of gold, okay? So with the Ace of Pentacles here at that level, you know that this is very, very good for you and you see this as a chance of new starts and new beginnings, very much in alignment with the eclipses and with the new Saturn in Capricorn journey for the next three years. New start, new beginning, new foundations, new structures, new love in ways that are very tangible, tangible evidence of love. Love is as love does. Like, like, okay, this is, we're in this swirly thing together. Uh, what exactly are you bringing to the table, dear one? Well, I am bringing truth, justice, honesty, and perspective. Uh, according to like the the highest laws possible this, which would fit very nicely according to your saturn in the ninth house journey for you thank you very much okay i know that doesn't sound very romantic but it's actually very good for you which is very good for us and you kind of go 
hmm, okay, well, I trust you. You seem like a good person, and we're already kind of in love anyway. Okay, thank you. I'm glad you understand that. <laughs> okay, so deep down in the other, whoa, okay. The reality is that, yeah, they're doing everything they can to hold up like truth and justice and the law from their perspective because they see the opportunity in you for themselves, okay? So that's good. Very, very nutritious. This is like a self-feeding reactor generator type of relationship here where your significant other over here, uh, Taurus, can see the chance for new starts and beginnings because of what they are witnessing in you as you tap into your dreams and start to ferment and refine and distill over this period coming up. The thing is, what's happening simultaneously inside of them da, 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 is their own innocence is being exposed. Okay, so that's probably very good for them because they probably in some ways feel kind of a little bit high and mighty, like there might be a little bit above you like they know more, like they're smarter than you, and they are going to uphold the law because they see themselves as the administrator uh, or the adjudicator and the decision maker in these very, 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 very important matters. But what's going to happen is deep inside, if they're honest with themselves, they are realize they know deep down is that they are as innocent and naive as you in your own ways about love and romance and how this is going to turn out for the long term because they are living under the same umbrella as you the same conditions of let's let's be honest here going into the unknown new beginnings fresh starts it's almost like hmm, well this is very very serious very important stuff well these new beginnings thank you very very much and like wow i hope it's true because i've always dreamt of this and do you think it can really happen? Yes, of course it could happen, but we have to do it properly. Okay, so that's the kind of vibe that I'm feeling here. Let's have a look at the relationship core itself. Well, going for it, that's for sure. It can be very, let's say, almost like shockingly awakening for you, Taurus. Remember, this is your reading for you. It's not a couple's thing. It's not like you're sitting there and they're sitting over there and there's terror illumination over here, like, and we're having like a, you know, relationship counseling thing. No, this is all about you, Taurus. And there's the significant over other here uh, who's part of the story, but it's your story. It's your reading. So what can happen in this situation is that you kind of, you might get a little bit blindsided by what's happening. You might get a, like multiple like shock waves of awakening and new understanding, especially with that new moon eclipse happening way up there in your 10th house of your place in this world, where it's almost like you get fully, fully exposed uh, in the way that anybody would in a position of high office, like being a president or a leader or someone in charge or a manager or a boss. They are very, very exposed, you know, like if you're an employee, you're sitting behind a desk or working on a, a job somewhere and you're, you know, uh, laying bricks and whatever it is you might do working as a nurse. And then you've got lots of layers of hierarchy above you. So you can just like, you know, go through your life without having to deal with that. But in the 10th house, you're very, very visible. There's like, there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to hide. And that's where you might get these shocking awakenings of what's happening in your sense of yourself in the world. And that has like a, a ripple effect on your love life. And of course, it's highly uh, contrasted by what happened in the eclipse. And you're going to see the eclipse thing again uh, in the middle of the year when you get the new moon Leo thing. You're going to get really jolted that time. And so my feeling is you're going to get a bunch of like al almost like rude awakenings about how awesome this is, but also how it can be a little bit unnerving and scary at times, especially if you go right up to the very tippy tippy edge of the potential and opportunities here. And you literally kind of go, whoa, you might discover that you're not so good with dealing with heights. You might get feelings of getting wigged out and vertigo where you could easily like be right at the very limits of your ability to cope with love and relationships in the context of this relationship so that 
all the best things get exposed, all the dreams you could have ever imagined, wished for, chances for new beginnings get exposed, but also the things that aren't working that are almost coming like as a shocking awareness, uh, but that that's very, very illuminating for you. It's like getting lightning bolts from the sky that suddenly light up everything around you in, in the night that you'd never noticed before because everything was dark and foggy, perhaps Neptunian or something dreamlike that needed to, you know, that has not been fully like charged up yet, but it's going to happen now. It's happening now. And you're going to discover that you're in the companionship of someone who is extremely well intended and has only the best intentions for you, themselves, and the relationship itself. Uh, but they are going to discover that they are going to discover their own frailties and innocence and weakness uh, as well on the journey. But it's very well intended because all they care about is the love here. Okay, so you're very very lucky in a certain way, Taurus. However, uh, it, you know. You know, you're going to need a lot of courage to go through all this and deal with this, but I feel it's going to be very worth your while. Look at this, because it's going to be very inspiring. It's going to lead both of you. The whole relationship becomes like an inspirational journey for both of you. Like you get to go on this amazing journey of discovery. It isn't just self-discovery for you, Taurus, in the context of the relationship, but it's also self-discovery for the other where it's mutual self-discovery, mutual awakening, mutual deep soul healing that occurs in the context of this seventh house dynamic, okay? I'm thinking specifically of the shakings and the rumblings that are happening in the Aquarius-Leo dynamic and all the solidification, repurposing, restructuring of your understandings of life in the world happening up there in your ninth house, Saturn and Capricorn, and then BAMO, the big Jupiter and Scorpio thing. Now, here's the here's the catch. It's not a catch, but here's the key. Let's say here's the key here. When we're talking about deep soul healing in the context of intimacy, in the context of a marriage type structure, well, you know, it sounds okay to say that on Terra Illumination, but we're talking about uh, the healing power of intimacy. And that intimacy, we're talking about shared deep soul intimacy at the soul level with a significant other. And it's very hard for that to happen without having a very, let's say, deeply committed relationship where you both bravely and courageously deep go deep sea diving into that level of intimacy, intimacy where not a lot of people want to go to their because it's too scary. They don't want to discover the shadows and the demons and the darkness and everything that's not working for them. They just want everything to be cute and comfortable like an old sofa, okay? But we're talking about deep transformational soul healing, which is really, really good for you. And guess what? As we do this, as we intimate and separate, as you do the deep soul healing, it's really good for them too. So can you understand why they're perfectly happy to be on board with you? and be committed with you and submit themselves to this journey no matter their own innocence because they see the new opportunities in you through you and they are they are just as bold and courageous <clears throat> to get on the, <clears throat> the journey with you so in a way it's very very exciting it's like the relationship itself becomes exciting and inspiring which encourages you to want to keep doing this no matter how scary it might be Healing through deep intimacy as we intimate and we separate. I don't want to spell it out for you, but you can uh, uh, reimagine that for yourself, okay? Beautiful. I really am happy for you, Taurus, all right? I'm just going to leave that here. You can reinterpret however you want, okay? Watch your sun, moon, and rising. Do all that stuff. Do the cross-watching. Do all that. Reinterpret, okay? Make it your own. Make it your own reading, all right? Bye-bye. Thank you. Love you so much. Bye-bye.